This conference will now be re I am thine, O oh Lord. I have heard thy voice, and it told its love for me. And I long to rise in the arms of faith and be closer drawn to thee. Oh, draw me nearer, nearer, blessed Lord, to the cross where thou hast died. Draw me nearer, nearer, blessed Lord, to thy precious bleeding side. Our Father and our God, we come to say thank you tonight. Oh God, we thank you that we ask that you would just draw us nearer, nearer to your God, to the cross where thou hast died. Draw us nearer to thy precious bleeding side. Oh, for a closer walk with God, a calm and a heavenly frame, a light to shine upon the road that will lead us to the land. Where is the blessedness I knew when first I saw the Lord? Where is the soul refreshing view of Jesus? And is where the dearest idol I have known, whatever that idol be, help me to tear it from thy throne and worship only thee. Our Father, we thank you tonight for being our God. Oh God, our Father, which is in heaven, and God, we look up to you, the author and the finish of our faith. Oh God, we lift our hands in the sanctuary tonight. We lift our hands to give you the praise. Oh God, because you're a great God and there is none like you. You're our Father, our Creator, our maker and we at, we exalt you tonight oh god we at, we adore you tonight oh god we come together just to magnify you tonight thank you for keeping us thank you oh god for your keeping power oh god we started from the rocking of our cradle god we're still here and lord we say thank you sometimes we seem as though we're making it on broken pieces but lord we stayed with the ship oh god and we say thank you tonight oh god Oh, God, just a few more risings and setting of the sun, and we'll be done, too, with the toils and the troubles of this world. But, Lord, while we're here, we're going to, oh, God, concentrate on you and magnify your name tonight. We thank you for your Holy Spirit that keeps us, that guides us, that teaches us, that brings back to our remembrance all things, that directs us, that empower us. Thank you for the Holy Ghost. Oh, God, that shows us the way of Christ, the way of salvation. Thank you, oh, God for the Holy Spirit. Thank you for your word tonight. Oh God, let it continue to be a lamp to our feet and a light unto our pathway. Your word, which is bread, oh God, manna from on high. Oh God, we thank you. We thank you, oh God, tonight. And bless us, keep us as only a God can. We thank you for the first prayer tonight. Thank you for the first song. Oh God, thank you for your people, this waiting congregation have come name, together name by name and home by home. We ask that your Holy Spirit bring us now together. I know that we're in various places, but Lord, as we study tonight, oh God, let us, oh God, come together in spirit and in truth, oh God. Let us come together as one body in Christ, oh God. Let nothing interfere, oh God. Open up our understanding, oh God, that we can share with your people, oh God. And we thank you, oh, night, oh God, tonight. We thank you for this day. In Jesus' name, we pray that you bless this people tonight. Each home, bless. Oh God, every condition, bless, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Even me, Lord, let some drops continue to fall on me. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, and amen. We greet you tonight with Jesus' joy. Glad to be here. So glad to be in the number one more time. Amen. God is great and greatly to be praised. Thank God for you, you and you who thought it not robbery. I don't know about you, but I'm still full from last Tuesday. Amen. That's what bread from heaven to do for you. <laughs> Amen. I'm full from Tuesday. I'm full from Sunday. Amen. Amen. It's good that you can pull into the gas station. Amen. And still have three quarters of a tank. <laughs> Amen. I'm going to tell you something. You better stay on full because Satan is going to try to drain you. Amen. You know how you know when you drain? is when you let anything come out your mouth. 
uh, you know how you know when you drain that you you can't even quote no scriptures, amen. You know how you know when you drain, you ain't even got a song to sing. You can't pray for yourself or nobody else, amen. You know how you know when you drain, your testimony will dry up. You know you don't you start talking about everything instead of talking the gospel. You you will indulge in indulge in gossip. That's how you know you 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 need some fuel in your tank. Ah, come on now, am I talking right? Hey Amen. You got to stay on. You got to keep that uh, spiritual tank full. How do you keep it full? Through the word of God, through prayer, through, to, through worship. Amen. Through fasting. Amen. Through the word of God. Amen. That's how you keep your spiritual tank full. Amen. It's time out uh, for giving the devil credit. Talking about the devil made me do it. No. You, God give you power. Amen. Amen. He gives us power. Amen. You, you, Sometimes, I ain't talking about, here's another example, when you don't have the whole arm of God on, man, have it done all, stand, put on the whole armor. Amen. There's some things we need to put on, and there's some things we need to take off, to put off. Amen. That's another coming down the pike. Amen. But we have to make sure that we're spiritually fit. You know, we go to the length every day to make sure our body, well, the majority of us should, that we're healthy and our body and our hygiene, our, our hygiene is just right. Amen. We looking good and we smelling good and we make sure we dress properly. But are we spiritually dressed every day? Huh? Did you spend some time in prayer and meditation? Did you try to help somebody throughout the day? Did you call someone? Some people may not be able to get around, but did you try to encourage someone? And there's so many various forms of communication now. We got the text, we got the Facebook, FaceTime. Amen, technology has made it so easy, amen, that you can communicate. Did you try to encourage somebody today via text, email, amen, or just phone call? You know, tell somebody you love them, tell somebody you miss, that Jesus loves them. Amen, this is how you keep yourself fit. Hey man, did you go out to help somebody? Uh-oh, don't. Jesus said that, you know, he's going to do a great separation. He said, I was a hunger. Did you feed me? I was a thirst. Did you give me drink? I, I was out. Did you bring help, do something to bring me in? I was naked. Did you close me? <laughs> uh, I, was in, I was in prison. Did you come to me? I was sick. Did you visit me? Now, that ain't got nothing to do with your... Uh, uh, this is between you and the Lord. I ain't talking about your church responsibility. Amen. Amen. It's about us doing the work of the church. I ain't talking about your church work. Amen. This is what the Lord, if you go according to the word, and he said, and as much as you've done it to the least of these, our brethren, we have done it uh, unto him. Amen. And so brothers and sisters, amen, we are encouraged. And I'm telling you, we're living in the time now. We don't have to go for our greater central. They are encamped right outside our doors. Our own people with mental illness, amen, with that lunatic spirit, amen. But do we have the power? That's the question. Do you have the power to go up to people and say, Jesus love you? You don't have to be in that condition, amen. You come out, cast folk out, amen. That's how you know when you're spiritual fit. Or if you're not, most time we just walk on by because we can't do nothing for them and almost can't do nothing for ourselves. When you find people say, Pastor, I, I need you to pray. Amen. I need you to pray. I know we're supposed to pray for one another, but it ought to come to some point, amen, that you're able to pray for yourself and pray for others. Amen. You have to, like I often say, what you did last year, if you're in the same boat, in the same spiritual condition you is last year there was no growth amen amen so we ought to do some more self examination and when you're able i know charity begins at home amen but you ought to have have enough power enough strength because that's what the holy ghost is it ain't your power it's the holy ghost you ought to have enough holy ghost in you that you can do something for somebody else listen i always have some the lord always give me something to drop on somebody on, and including me, that this word is for me too. Amen. The ministry starts for me right outside the door. And sometimes it looks like we have a party going on outside, right outside, outside the greatest center. 
sometimes. Amen. And they not just there. Amen. You know, the, the hospital system with this pandemic, they turn all our people loose. They, they ain't holding no more in Bellevue. They're not holding them no more in Wards Island and, and all metropolitan hospital. They're not holding them no more. You really got to be sick to be in the psych ward. Amen. And they done turn all our people loose in the streets, in our communities, in the subways. Amen. And the city is saying that they're not going to do nothing for them. And, and then when they go and commit crimes, amen, what can you do? How can you, how can you imprison a man that's already in prison? within himself. Amen. So this calls for spiritual warfare. Amen. And we have to stay physically fit. We have to stay spiritually fit. I need a little more Jesus. Amen. Can I get a witness? I need a little more Jesus. That's when I pull into the fuel station. When I come on the prayer line, when I, when I come to Bible study, when I come to worship, amen. When I come to baptism and the Lord's Supper, amen, amen. I'm just saying through my uh, witness that I need a little more Jesus to do what? To help me on my, I'm not ashamed to say that I need a little more Jesus. I try to go to the conference. I try to be there to get a word, amen. Minister Graham and sometimes Evangelist Cooper, amen. We just, some folks say, oh, Sunday, two hours is good enough for me, amen. And you don't see him no more. I'm going to move on. I'm going to move on. But Reverend Monroe is true. What he used to say, some of our, I won't say disciples, but some of our members are just like submarines, submarine Christians, submarine members. What is a submarine member, Brother Pastor? Well, like a submarine, you don't see them on Sunday morning. That submarine come up. They emerge. <laughs> Amen. You see them on Sunday morning, they emerge just like a submarine, and you see them for two hours, amen, and after the benediction is given, they're just like a submarine. They submerge, and they're going back down. You don't see them nowhere. You don't see them visiting the hospital. You don't see them. Don't hear about they try to help somebody. They submer sub submerge and go back into the world, amen, and time out for submarine Christians, hey, but, but you got to stand up and stand up for Jesus. Be counted. Amen. Ye soldiers of the cross. God bless you tonight. Uh, uh, that's the uh, something I just wanted to drop on you. I didn't know I was going to say all that, but thank you, Holy Ghost. Tonight, 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 we got a, there's a great word tonight. Uh, uh, we're in the book of Psalms. I'm excited. Uh, Psalm 95. Amen. It's, it's a, a psalm that we, uh, as believers, uh, we need to stay divinely connected and we need to know our duty and our, our, our obligation and responsibility to the Lord. Amen. We know our responsibility to man. Amen. Uh, but to what is our duties and responsibility to the Lord? Amen. And as it was said, if you know better, then you'll do better. Ain't that right? If you know better, it ought to prick you in your spirit. I know some people say, I said I ain't going. I say I ain't going to do, amen. But when you got the Holy Ghost, it'll prick you, it'll wake you up. Hey, but I couldn't just stay there. I couldn't keep it to myself, amen. Uh, tell somebody with the Lord. So Psalm 95, we're going to read it in the King James Version. I have a few notes. And then, you know, most of our lesson tonight really is going to be derived out of our book. And I have some scriptures that's going to support it tonight. But it's, it was what we need to know especially talks about a hard heart, a hard heart. And if you don't be careful, we can get that hard heart and God can't work with a hard heart. Let me read the scriptures, Psalm 95. We want to acknowledge our devotional leader, our prayer uh, service leader, our chairman, Deacon Bryant, and all the deacons to the ministerial staff, Minister Graham, amen, Evangelist Cooper, amen, Minister Hayes, and all the disciples of the Lord who worship in greater center to all our brothers and sisters who join us. God bless you. Thank you so much. Psalm 95 reads, O come, let us sing unto the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and make a joyful noise unto him 
with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great king above all gods and are the deep places of the earth. The strength of the hills is his also. The sea is his and he made it in his hands form the dry land. Oh, come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord, our maker, for he is our God. We are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Today, if you will hear his voice, harden not your heart with the provocation as in the day of temptations in the wilderness. When your fathers tempted me, proved me and saw my work, 40 years long was I grieved with this generation and said, it is a people that do err in their heart, in their heart, and they have not known my ways. Verse 11, unto whom I swear in my wrath that they should not enter into my rest. Thus ends the reading of the word, Psalm 95. Uh, brothers and sisters, I just want to share with you uh, some notes that I derived, and then we'll look take a look at some other things. Uh, Psalms 95, brothers and sisters, is a praise psalm. Praise psalm, or we say a praise song. Uh, this psalm can be sung in the worship experience. Amen. Uh, and look at this. It's the fifth 24 praise psalms. You know, we got 150 psalms, and each psalm have different titles, but this is the fifth of, a, of 24 out of the 150 psalms. This is the fifth of 24 praise psalms in the book of Psalms. And then, you know, uh, uh, some were mit written by David. So those who have a pen, uh, I, if you have your pen writ with you, this is the fifth. Listen to this. Get a, I'm going to write, give you some numbers real quick. Uh, Psalms 29. Just write 29. Psalms 65, 66, 75, 96, 97, 98, 99, 100. Psalms 103. Psalms 104, Psalms 105, Psalms 107, Psalms 117, Psalms 134, Psalms 135, Psalms 136, Psalms 145, Psalms 146, Psalms 147, Psalms 148, Psalms 149, and Psalms 50 are all praise psalms. Now we know this, we praise God for who uh, we worship. We worship God, let me get that right. We worship God, amen, for who he is. There is none like him, that's why we worship him. But we praise God, amen, for all that he has done, amen. We praise God, when you look at all his mighty acts, you have a reason to give thanks. That's what praise is, give thanks, amen, unto God. We praise God for all that he has done. We praise him for what he's doing right now. And we have faith, amen, to praise him for what he will do. That's what you call faith. You got a doctor, you got an operation, you got to go through, amen, and you start praising in advance. <laughs> Hallelujah. You got some adversaries, some enemies you have to confront. You start praising in advance. Amen. That's what the history of the Bible is. God had proven himself. Enemies behind you. You got some impossibilities in front of you that you're facing. That's where your faith comes in. You start praising God. Because God, you know how you can praise him? Because you go to the scriptures and you read what he has already done. What he has done for Abraham. What he has done for Isaac. What he's done for Jacob. What God has done for Joseph. What he's done for David what he's done for Samuel, what he's done for Elijah, what he's done for Mary, what he's done for Deborah, amen, what he's done for Naomi, amen, what he's done for, amen, you name it, amen, what he's already done, that show, that builds your faith, amen, what he did for Hannah, amen, what he did for Rahab, amen, when you look at what you, ain't nothing new under the sun, 
So when you want to increase your faith or strengthen your faith, who he healed already, the woman with the issue of blood. Amen. You got some physical issues. Amen. How about if you was caught in the act of sin? Amen. I told you one day we're going to come back and uh, uh, do a prayer or confession. How about uh, many of us have been caught in the act? Yeah, you might not have been caught, but somebody know you. It's surely been known. What Moses said, surely this thing is known. I got to get out of Egypt. Amen. And But what did Jesus say? He that was out sin. He told that woman caught in the act of adultery. Uh, he that was out sin cast the, the people. He told them cast the first stone. And when he looked up, he said, woman, where are thine accusers? And he, There is none. Because they walked away one by one because all have sinned and come short. Uh, but he told the woman, uh, neither do I condemn thee. He said, neither do I condemn thee. That's what you call mercy and forgiveness. Amen. Go and sin no more. Even when we fall, you ain't got to stay in the muck and mire. Get up out of there as believers. Amen. And, and so uh, this, uh, these psalms, these praise psalms are great for individual devotion. When you just want to, you know, spend some time, quiet time, those psalms that I listed, this, this teaching session is recorded, so I know the number, I might have went kind of quick, but if you want to play it back, those numbers, those are the 24 books of Psalms that are praise Psalms. So it's good for you individually when you just want to give God praise, you know, and then it's good for us uh, praise leaders when you're trying to lead people into worship. Amen. It's, these sick praise Psalms are, are enthusiastically lifting, uh, joyful acknowledging god for who he is amen so if you want to try to lead people as worship leaders you need to know where to find the praise song if you want to be the praise leader amen am i talking right uh the writer of psalms 95 is anonymous okay but in my study i found out that many attribute psalms 95 the writer of psalms 95 to be david David, uh, he's he's a writer of a few of the praise songs, but they many attribute this uh, author of 95 Psalms to be David, uh, that great psalmist and songwriter of Israel. And it's based on uh, what we find in Hebrews chapter four, verses seven, amen. Now the theme of Psalm 95 is an invitation to worship God. Amen, an invitation, that's the theme of 95. Oh, come, let us sing unto the Lord. Have you been invited to worship? Do you, as believers, do you have to be invited to worship? I was just thinking that today as I was sitting here and I was saying, uh, there ought to be something in our spirit of anticipation. I just can't wait, amen, to come to worship on the Lord's day, amen. I can't wait to join in on prayer the, at the hour of prayer, amen, or the time of Bible study. This is some, as believers, as disciples, there ought to be some, nobody should have to remind you that there's worship on the Lord's day, amen. If you're able and willing and ready, you ought to be have some anticipation or you just come in to worship because it's the thing to do. Or you come in because, you know, mama may be gone, but mama said, I remember mother said, you better go to church. Are we coming out of uh, tradition to worship? The song the, it opens up, O Come, is a divine invitation to worship God, not the pastor, not, you know, some churches got good choirs and praise the Lord for the singing. Amen, amen. I'm like, we're going to get into that verse, first verse anyway. But it ain't about the pastor, and that's where a lot of churches go off. You have blessed men and women of God, and they get hooked on the the creature, am I talking right? You, when you have blessed pastors, you ought to thank God for your pastor, whether it be male or female. And if they're doing what the Lord say do, according to the Lord or the way of the Lord, thank God for the pastor, male or female. But don't get hooked on the pastor because guess what? The, a few things, the pastor don't have a heaven or hell to put you in. He got to die himself. And number two, uh, 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 the pastor, when he leaves, the church is still going to be there. Upon this rock, I build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail. Some people leave the church because of the, the creature. 
Amen. But our hope and our focus is on the creator. That's why he says, oh, come, let us sing unto the Lord. Amen. Our praise is unto the Lord. Our worship is unto the Lord. Amen. Amen. There are three admonition, admonitions that we receive from Psalms 95. Listen to the three admonitions. Uh, uh, we uh, admonish to come and praise the Lord, one. Number two, we are admonish to come and bow down and worship the Lord. And then number three, we come, we admonish to come to hear and obey the Lord. Amen. Amen. We come, we admonish to praise the Lord through singing uh, and bow down and worship the Lord, but also to hear and obey the Lord, which is done by his word. Psalm 95 is called the enthronement psalm, which calls for the people to acknowledge that the Lord is a great king above all the other gods, all the other little gods, amen? Uh, <laughs> you know, you got some, you know, other nations, heathen nations, they made their little gods, amen? Uh, you had, they took, they didn't know the God, so they made little gods, the God of the sun, the God of the moon, the God of fertility, the God of the ground, you know? And they prayed to their little gods, amen? But I want to say to those that who know the Lord, amen, what distinguishes our God, even in the way we write the name God, amen, uh, 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 we have to use capital G. Whenever you're talking about the Lord, it's capital L. And when you're talking about God, it's capital G. That distinguishes our God, amen, from the other gods, amen. I don't know about the little other gods, I don't even deal with the little other gods, but you know, them little other gods, it can be whatever you make, whatever you turn into a god, amen? Some of us people turn their houses into gods, or turn their cars into, oh, don't touch that. What you doing, you know? You can't do this. All that stuff will, will, will perish away. You turn your children into God, turn your husband and wives into God, amen? But we, work, we, we worship, we know, the God, the Elohim, amen, the Jehovah Jireh, amen. And so um, Psalm, it exhorts the congregation to worship the creator. Psalm 95 also warns the congregation against unbelief, as in the days of the wilderness wandering, when God's rest was not experienced. Uh, Psalm 95 has three movements. Psalm 95 have three movements. And the three movements that you'll find in Psalms 95, each reflecting a mood, the mood of the worshiping community. So what should be the mood for worship? Well, the first movement, the worship of God in, the mood, in a mood of celebration. They focus on celebration. When you look at verses one through five, the worship of God in the mood of celebration, verses one through five. The next movement, uh, number two, the worship of God in a cont contemplative mode, in a contemplative mode, verses six through seven. And then the third movement is the worship of God in obedience, verses eight through 11. So those are the three movements that you find in Psalm 95. And look at, let's look at verse number one. We're going to go to the book. It says, uh, O come. Let us sing unto the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise huh? to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving. And verse two said, let us come before his presence with thanksgiving uh, and make a joyful noise unto him with psalms. Uh, for the Lord is a great God and a great king above all gods. That's what the scriptures say. Amen. Uh, and let's look at that invitation to come. Amen. Amen. We have this divine invitation to come. Amen. And and then look look at what it says. There's there's a several ways that we are supposed to come before the Lord. Uh, and this psalm is very similar to Psalms 100, the 100 psalm that we sing. It says, "Come before. How shall we come before the presence of the Lord?" Well, he says here, let us sing 
unto the Lord. So singing is one way that we come before the presence of the Lord. I see uh, Sister Cunningham, you're on the line tonight. Thank you. Good to see you. Can you read uh, uh, Psalms 100? I hope you all have your highlighters tonight. We're going to turn to Psalms 100. I'm going to share with you uh, verse 2. Uh, I'm going to share with you several ways that we can come before the Lord. Make a joyful, yeah, come on, Sister Cunningham. How shall we come before? Uh, several ways that we can come before his presence. Yes, good evening, all. Yes. You can read Psalms 100, one, verses 1 and 2 for us. You have to unmute yourself, Sister Cunningham. We can't hear you. I am unmuted. Can you hear me okay, now? Okay, we can hear you. I can hear you now. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. All right. Let's pick, that's one way that we can come before the presence of the Lord. And it says us here, too, as it says here in Psalm 95, come, let us sing unto the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. So singing, what singing, singing, uh, singing, singing, a joyful noise, singing. Uh, that's a form of praise. Singing is a song of praise. All right. Number two, it says in verse number two in our lesson here, let us come before his presence with thanksgiving. So that's another way. Uh, coming before the presence of the Lord. We come before with singing. Uh, uh, and let me share this with you when we talk about singing. Uh, when in my study, I found out uh, they were talking, of, and when, when we look at the children of Israel at the time uh, that uh, they wrote this psalm, they were talking about the hymns, hymns in the form of hymn. And if you look in the scriptures, uh, Sister Cunningham, can you turn Carlate, Col the book of Colossians, Colossians, excuse me, Colossians, I'm tongue-tied, Colossians chapter 3, we're going to look at verses 16 and 17, how do we come before the presence of the Lord, or what the church should do, uh, we was admonished when we come together, the church, what should we, how should we conduct ourselves, amen, Colossians chapter 3, verses 16 and 17, what would it say? Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. And whatever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father by him. Is that clear, everybody? How we should conduct ourselves as Paul and uh, admonish the church. Amen. Amen. Uh, even in uh, the book of Acts, when the first church got together, they continued in the apostles' doctrine. They continued in prayer. Ain't that right? Chapter 4. Amen. Didn't they do it? They continued uh, uh, in prayer and rejoicing. They continued in, uh, in, in, in no, that was chapter 2. Yeah. In Colossians. In, 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 uh, they were together, amen. And they continue in the apostles' doctrine. Yeah, they were continue in fellowship in the breaking of bread, amen. And so that we have to uh, uh, have uh, this type of praise and this mindset. But what a point I was trying to make when, when the writer David at that time, they would talk about the hymns. When they're talking about singing, I know we have these contemporary songs don't we? We love contemporary songs. That's just this different style of music. But uh, he was really pressing upon knowing the hymn because he just read it and the hymn. And we cast out a whole lot of things uh, in our present churches. Amen. We throw it overboard. They say it's old timey. Amen. But that you cannot uh, throw out the hymn of the church because they were talking about the hymn in the Bible hymns amen that was composed to uh set the stage or set the tone for worship amen there was a purpose there was a, a hymn has a purpose it has a message amen it has a meaning and so and it was done communal style congregational together 
Amen. Congregational praise. And brothers and sisters, we as disciples, I'm not talking about members. I'm talking about we as disciples, we are to know the hymn of the church, the hymns of the church. I know we are in contemporary time. And, if, and to be told, many of our churches today don't even have a congregational hymn. Amen. We sit and are entertained. We And most of these order of services, they already have soloists. So there's another term they give them. Uh, uh, they have another title in the modern church. Uh, not the soloist no more, but they are. Uh, it'll come to me that title that they give that person who do all the singing. Amen. And it's nothing done, and we just sit and watch, and and, and be spectators. But the, the disciples of the Lord are supposed to know the hymns of the church. Amen. And guess what? Not even the disciples. You should. I'm gonna be. I'm gonna step on some toes right now. I can do it. But you should not even be in the choir. Amen. You should not be. Uh, on the choir stand, if you don't know the hymn. And I impress, um, if we got some choir presidents, I impress to that you, you musician before, and I impress to the musician today. In your rehearsal, you are to go over the hymn, the congregation. If you serve in that Sunday, the next day, you are supposed, if anybody know the hymn, the congregation of hymn, it's supposed to be that choir, those choir members. And let me go a little further because I'm stepping on some toes. It's not even about rehearsals. You have to go a little further. You have to know what you're singing about. That's why I always press that you have to know. It's not about the song, but you have to know the purpose of the song and the meaning of the song, the message of the song. And it's all, if it's a, if a, if it's a song rooted in Christ, it should be able to be traced back to the word. That's why it's just, I know you come to rehearsal to get the melody, to be in your part and all that stuff, but you're still missing the point. You have to know the word, amen. You have to know who you singing about and what you singing about. And when you know that, then that makes, that make that brings the joy. Cause that's what, didn't we read it? He said, make a joyful noise. Some folks are just singing and making noise. But when you know the message behind what you're singing about, that's where the joy comes amen and you know people that know me now i'm talking about some of the choir members and I, I you know i'm a fan of the congregational hymn and i believe when it comes to the congregational hymn the choir if you got a choir in the choir stand they're the main cheerleaders of that congregational hymn and when we sing the congregational hymn and i can't hear the choir enthusiastically Amen. Singing the congregational hymn that causes me to look back and say somebody ain't been prepared. Amen. Or when I hear people hear them mumbling like they don't know the words, and some of these songs we've been singing for forever. Amen. Come on now. Amen. If you don't know, uh, time is filled with swift transition. No, don't help when you can't stand. Build your hopes on things eternal. Hold to God's unchanging hand. We done sung him with that 250. Amen. Come on. But here's the, let me get back to this. Uh, it says it's an invitation to come. Let us sing unto the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Now, I know we've moved from the days of Professor Wiggins, one of the greatest uh, ministers of music in our congregation, but the invitation. See, order of worship, things supposed to correlate. So when we came along, amen, and you sing in the choir, we processional in, what do we say? Hymn number 256 or hymn number 22. Come ye that, come we that love the Lord and let your joys be known. Join in a song of sweet accord and thus around the throne, amen. Uh, to Zion, beautiful, beautiful Zion. Uh, we're marching upward to Zion, that beautiful city of God. Amen. And then when you didn't have worship, you I know we done threw out the old black hymn book, amen, but the deacon even outlined the hymn, come ye that love the Lord and let your joy be known. Let, join in the song of sweet, sweet accord and thus surround us. Let those refuse to sing who never knew our God, 
but children of the heavenly king may speak their joys abroad. You can sing it with music or without music. The invitation, amen. When, you're, when you wake up on the Lord's day, you're already invited. It's up to you to make up in your mind and your spirit, I'm going, because we received that invitation, amen. And he says, let us come before his presence with thanksgiving. So that's another way that we come before. One, one, we come with singing. The next way we come with Thanksgiving, which is praise. And then also we are supposed to come, Sister Cunningham, uh, Chronicles, First Chronicles. Let's turn to First Chronicles, chapter 16 and verse 29. First Chronicles, uh, chapter 16 and verse 29. What does that say? Can you read it for me? Sister Cunningham, First Chronicles, chapter 16 and verse 29. 29. That's another way that we can come before his presence. Give unto the Lord the glory due unto his name. Bring an offering and come before him. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Hallelujah. That should be a highlight. I'm going to put that. That's highlighted. Worship him. How are we going to worship him? I'm excited. Just read it. Are you anybody excited tonight? Come before him. Bring your offering. Offering is your sacrifice of praise. Huh? Bring your offering. That's how we come before. What do you offer unto God besides your tithes? Huh? Yeah. You bring your offering. We are not, we, we all got something to give to the Lord. Amen. Worship him. Hey, thank you, sister. And the, the fruits of your lips. Bring your praise. Bring your sacrifice of praise. Bring your amen. Amen. Bring it. Bring your hallelujah. Amen. I like that song, my hallelujah belongs to you. And then James said, how we should come, how should we come before the presence of the Lord? Look at James chapter four and verse 10, and then we'll move on. James chapter four and verse 10. How shall we come before the presence of the Lord? Amen. Humble yourselves in the sight hey. of the Lord and he shall lift you up. All right. So you don't come boldly, but you come in a humble frame of mind, grateful to be there, but you humble yourself before the Lord. That's how we come before the presence of the Lord. Amen. We bring our offering. We come humble. We come with singing. Amen. Come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. What? And then it, this, see, this Psalm 95 coincides with uh, Psalm 100. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. For it is he that have made us, and we not we are we are his people, the sheep of his pasture. Amen. And then one more scripture for you, and I'm gonna move on. Uh, Saint John, chapter four and verse twenty-four. This is a highlight verse in our in our Bibles. Amen. John chapter four and verse twenty-four. Can you read it, Sister Cunningham? John, Saint John, chapter four and verse twenty-four. God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Read that again for me. God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. All right. I'm going to tell you something, brothers and sisters. I know we, when we look at John, we go to John 3.16, which is the uh, keynote one of the keynote scriptures in the Bible, we always go, go to John 3, 16 when it comes to salvation. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have everlasting or eternal life. Amen. Uh, but number, but John 4, 24 lets us know who God is. God is a spirit. And they that worship him must worship him in spirit. Amen. That's why we do what we do, spirit and in truth. Amen. We, our spirit, through the unction of the Holy Spirit, connects and unite with God's spirit. Amen. And so, not only that, uh, I'm really in the book too. Um, uh, let us come before His presence with thanksgiving, make a joyful noise. Amen. With Him, with psalms, uh, we we make noise. We're talking about a joyful noise. That's internal. Amen. For the Lord is a great God and a Great king above all God. So you see how it's even written in this lesson, verse number four, and I mean, verse three, the little gods, you better be careful with God you hook up with. Amen. Uh, 
because there's only one God, amen. And we, he is the true and living God. Uh, his name is, the three names in this verse three, you'll find when they said, uh, verse three, it says, for the Lord, amen. In other words, he's saying Jehovah, the Lord. And then in, in verse three, it says, El, a great God, amen. You'll find a great God. That means he's a great God. El, El Shaddai, amen. El Shaddai, amen. He's the great, amen. Elohim, Elion, amen. The great, amen. And then uh, the great king above all gods. So he's highly exalted. That's why even in our prayer, we do adoration first. We exalt God, amen. Even our lesson book talks about what? Be exalted, hey, be exalted. There is none like our God, amen. And that's one thing I wanted to point out. Uh, yeah, and it says this psalm begins with the energy and delight at the prospect of worshiping God in the temple. Uh, and then I was asking the question, do you get excited about anticipating worship on the Lord's day? That's a question we can ask uh, later on. Uh, let's get here to the, uh, the middle part of our lesson. Uh, the sea is his. Now here is where we get excited. In verses four uh, through seven in his hands are the deep places of the earth the strength of the hills is his also the sea is his he made it and his hands formed the dry land then it says uh so in other words when it comes to creation brothers and sisters sister cunningham can you read psalms 24 to confirm uh this these two verses four and five psalms 24 verses one and two to confirm yeah the earth is the lord's and the fullness thereof the world and they who dwell therein for he has founded it upon the seas and established it upon the floods who shall ascend into the hill of the lord or who shall stand in his holy place thank you that's good that's good that's good thank you really just one and two i apologize yeah so when it comes to everything in this earth been created by god matter of fact Genesis 1 and 1 and just tell us that in the beginning God created everything we have everything you see the land the sea the sun the stars the moon the cattle amen uh, the animals man amen God made amen the steps of the sea he knows everything that even the the hairs on your head he knows amen amen the birds the lilies you know God created, and God, I often say this because the Holy Spirit gave it to me, God didn't create nothing he can't control, amen. I think we even heard on Sunday, Reverend Boulder said that even Satan, even though he's the prince of the air, he has to bow to God, amen. God is the founder, amen. So a wise person would put their trust in the Lord, amen, amen, and then, uh, uh, for he is our God. And then it says here, oh, come, verse six. I want to highlight this and then we're going to go to the book. Oh, come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord, our maker, for he is our God and we are his people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Today, if you will hear his voice. Now, when you look at verse six, uh, bow down, kneel and worship is a, it's a call. It puts you in a, a frame to be reflective, it's a humble approach to God, amen. And I start to say that you don't always have to be on bended knees, amen. In prayer, that's what Reverend Monroe would say, you know, but have, keep your, your mind and your spirit in a prayer, uh, uh, be mindful, be, keep it in a prayer form. So when you approach God, you approach him with humility, Amen. Some people are not physically able to bow, but I found out something. When the road get rough <laughs> and the storm is tough, amen, you will prostrate yourself. Can I get a witness? You'll find yourself face down, whether you're in the house, you're in your kitchen, in your bathroom, and sometimes the Holy Spirit will knock you down in the church. And only the people that have the spirit of God will understand that. 
it's just a form of bowing down, humming, submissive yourself to recognize who God is. Most people, when you look at biblical characters, amen, when you was, came into the presence of a holy, you know, uh, angel, if you look in the scriptures, most holy men, uh, 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 they thought they was in the presence of God. I think about John, we was on the island of Patmos and he, he was in the presence of a, of, of a being. And he thought that was God, but it was just an angel. And the angel said, don't bow to me, brother. I, I, I have to bow to you. Amen. I'm not God. Amen. But when you get in God's presence, it ought to make you do something. Amen. It ought to make you humble yourself. Amen. It ought to make you uh, uh, know that who God is and who you are. He is the creator and you're the created. Amen. Let us bow down. Amen. Let us worship. Amen. Oh, come. It's an invitation. And while we're parked there, you know, because we're going to go somewhere else now, we're going to talk about the Israelites and their hard heartedness. But I I, I, I can't not, uh, uh, and maybe this verse will kind of connect everything, the rest and, and the divine invitation. But the greatest divine invitation we can receive is from Christ. And I just want to share this verse with you while, while we're talking about invitation. And this should be highlighted in your Bibles. Uh, St. Matthew chapter 11, Sister Cunningham. Can you read St. Matthew chapter 11 and, and, and verse 28 through 30? This is the greatest invitation that we can ever receive. Amen. I know it. And the psalmist, he in, extends the invitation to the believers to come. But when you meet Christ, amen, This these verses right here are going to tie really the whole lesson because it talks about rest. It talks about being invited. Amen. Uh, invite invitation. Come on, sister. Thank you, sister. Come. Can you read verses 28 through 30? Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. All right, that's the divine invitation right there. Come unto me. Now, the psalmist invites us to come to the temple to worship or come to the, the, the sanctuary to worship, but Christ takes it even more deeper and he makes it more personal, amen. Come unto me, ah, uh -uh. he's the one, the author, the finish of our faith. He's the one that died, that meant that we may have a right to the tree of life, amen that labor and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Amen. Uh, come unto me, take my yoke upon you. That's the, that's the cross, amen. And learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and you shall find what? Rest for your soul. You know, uh, uh, we sing that song, Jesus keep me near the cross, amen. And the only thing we're looking for ultimately, and then when you look at our lesson today, I'm jumping. I'm we. I'm covering a lot of stuff in the book, and I didn't even open the book. But ultimately, our service, ultimately our invitation to come into Christ, ultimately our acceptance of Christ, ultimately our living for the Lord. Amen. Ultimately, amen. Uh, ultimately, when death comes and uh, takes us out of time into eternity, only thing we're looking for is rest for our souls. Amen. Rest beyond what we say. Rest beyond the river. Near the cross, I watch and wait. Trust and ever hoping. Yeah, yeah, that's where we talk about Jesus keep me. Yeah, but we received a divine invitation and we responded to the divine invitation. Amen. So thank God for the psalmist. Now let's get here with the hardening of your heart. Amen. He says, for uh, he is our God and we are his people of his pastures and the sheep of his hand. Today, if you will hear his voice, harden not your heart as in the provocation, as in the day of temptation in the wilderness. When your fathers tempted me, proved me and saw my work 40 years long, was I grieved with this generation and said, it is a people that do err in their heart and they do not know my, they have not known my ways unto them, unto whom I swear in my wrath 
that they should not enter into my wrath. So what happened is that the psalmist now is really saying that uh, you have to know uh, what you hear, uh, what you're hearing. Uh, you need to know the reason for your worship. Uh, yeah, know what you're hearing. <laughs> uh, and, and know what it's all about. Hearing, the day that you hear my voice, amen. And I want to say something. Uh, uh, here's, here's another point I want to make. You have to hear the importance of hearing. Uh, brothers and sisters, I'm, I'm making a statement here. Singing is good. Music has its place in worship. But if you're going to be saved, uh, if you're going to be converted, if you're going to be born again, if you want to be transformed, amen, it must be done by the word of God. The day that you hear my voice, the day that you hear my word, and then you, when you don't harden, not your heart. I'm just going to give you the scripture that we're not going to park there because our time is uh, uh, leaving us. But Hebrews chapter number three, verses seven through 15, when you get a chance, read it. It took Paul, the writer of the book of Hebrews is telling the people, don't harden not your heart when it comes to the word of God. Amen. Hear his voice and harden not your heart. Even in Revelations chapter number three, uh, in verse number 20. Yeah, Revelation, the book of Revelation, chapter number three. And look what he says here. Verse number 20. Revelations chapter three. Jesus is because it's written in red, it's, it's, it's in uh, red, right? Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man, huh, hear my voice and open the door, I will come in to him and will sup with him and he with me. Amen. You hear his voice, that means you hear his word. You open up the door to your heart. He stand at the door. Amen. He's knocking at the door. Hear and hear. Hear. Faith comes by hearing, hearing the word of God. So, you know, uh, sometime in worship, it can be a trick of the enemy because people get excited. They get enthusiastic. The music is going and, you know, people are up. But then when it's time for the word, you fall asleep. You, you're drifting. Amen. You're not interested. You take cigarette breaks take telephone nowadays everybody on the cell phone and you're missing the whole purpose of worship that's the greatest enemy the greatest trick of devil. singing only plows the field breaks the ground for the word and that's why many people remain malnutrition amen because they it's almost like uh uh they like gravy you know, there are some people that can make a good gravy. And sometimes everything that leads up to worship is good. Gravy is good in its place. But if you're not getting the, the meat, what? how can you say you, can you make it just on gravy? Huh? You need the meat. Paul said, I, I can't give you the meat. I have to still feed you with milk because you have not matured. You have not grown. Amen. So people get... You know, we don't know, it's all consummate worship, amen. But the meat, you have to hear the word. And what happens is that uh, when, in, in the psalmist, it looks back, and I just wanna make this point and I'm gonna kind of tie it up. Open your book, all right? Open your book and we're gonna bring this point out and we're on page 35, right? Psalm 95. Uh, the psalmist, and I'm going to look at the middle paragraph, in the annual feast of the tabernacle was a joyful event as the people looked. They did three looks. Look back on their ancestors' wilderness wandering. Then they did the second look. Looked around at the bountiful harvest. And then the third look, they looked up. Thanks to the Lord. Amen. So when we come to worship, brothers and sisters, we do three looks. We look back and see where the Lord has brought us from. 
hey, we look around and see, hey, count your many blessings. See what the Lord have done. Amen. And then we look up and we give thanks. Amen. Amen. Then we ought to do another look, which called look within. Amen. We ought to look within. Uh, and we come to give God praise. Amen. And so uh, he said, harden not your heart. And this is some information I found out uh, that uh, we deal with people in a, with a hard heart. Verse 8. Look at verse 8. Harden not your heart as in the provocation, as in the day of the temptation in the wilderness. I'm trying to close this out uh, because our time is lasting and I don't want to overrun. But a hardened heart, you know, uh, a hardened heart is a useless heart, as in a hardening lump of clay or hardened loaf of bread. Nothing can restore it or make it useful. The psalmist warns against hardening of heart as Israel did in the wilderness by continuing to resist God's will. They were so convinced that God couldn't deliver them that they simply lost faith in him. When a person's heart becomes hardened, that person is so stubbornly, oh, that's what a hard heart is. It's a stubborn heart who set in his ways that he or she cannot turn to God. Uh, and guess what? A hard heart, a hardened heart does not happen all at once, but it happens as a result of a series of choices to disregard God's will. Amen. Uh, if you disregard God long enough, God may toss you aside like hardened bread, useless and worthless, worthless. Yeah, a hard heart. Amen. And I'm just going to give you the two scriptures to actually show what Israel did that caused God to reject them. Sister Cunningham, can you read for us the book of Numbers? Uh, there's two scriptures. Matter of fact, uh, let's go to Numbers first. That's why they didn't enter to the rest. This is where they basically become a numbers chapter 14, verses 26 through 35. Now, you know, God took them out of Egypt land, slayed Pharaoh, opened up the Red Sea, land a promise for them, and look how they acted in the, in the wilderness. Can you read Sister Cunningham from verse 14 to 26? Oh, no, excuse me, from verse 26 to 35. You're right, Sister, Sister Foreman. Thank you. Chapter 14, verse 26 to 35. And the Lord spoke unto Moses and said unto Aaron, saying, How long shall I bear with this evil congregation who murmur against me? I have heard the murmurings of the children of Israel, which they murmured against me. Say unto them, As I truly as I live, saith the Lord, as ye have spoken in my ears, so will I do to you. Your carcasses shall fall in this wilderness, and all who were numbered of you, according to your whole number, from twenty years old and upward, who have murmured against me. Doubtless ye shall not come into the land concerning which I saw, swore to make you dwell therein, except Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, and Joshua, the son of Nun. But your little ones, whom ye said shall be a prey, them will I bring in and they shall know the land which ye have despised. But as for you, your carcasses, they shall fall in this wilderness, and your children shall wander in the wilderness forty years, and be your hollow trees, and so your carcasses be wasted in the wilderness. After the number of the days in which ye searched the land, even forty days, each day for a year, shall ye bear your iniquities, even forty years, and ye shall know my breach of promise. And I, the Lord, have said, I will surely do it unto all this evil congregation who are gathered together against me. In this wilderness, they shall be consumed, and there they shall die. And you read the next two verses, the last two verses. And the men who Moses sent mm -hmm. to search the land who returned and made all the congregation to murmur against him by bringing up a slander upon the land. Even those men who did bring up the evil report upon the land died by the plague before the Lord. But Joshua, the son of Nun. Thank you, thank you, that's good. Thank you, thank you, that's it. Thank you right there. Be careful, 
when God made a way, provided a way for you, and you begin to doubt God and talk against God, talk against God's leaders, and be careful. You know, they say the sixth thing the Lord hates, seven is abomination, one that soweth discord among the congregation. Yeah, that was Proverbs. Yeah. You got to be careful how you stir up stuff in God's hunger. When God has a plan and you try to go in there and distract God and God's people, God is very sensitive. I like that word tonight. We serve a sensitive God and he knows you can't hide. You can't, you can't, <laughs> you can't say you didn't say it. He hears you on the telephone. He hears you on the internet he hears you stirring up amen and you're trying to he has a will for his congregation and you going against god's will and you stubborn 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 i had something to say about stubborn yeah hardened heart yes uh anything that's spiritual those are people who refuse to obey they refuse to follow they refuse to be under to receive, accept, believe, release. They refuse to go along with God's program. They refuse to conform. They refuse to be transformed. They even refuse to perform. Amen. They refuse to share. Stop. You better be careful when you get a hard heart. You can't do much with a hard hearted person. When God can't do nothing with a hard-hearted person, He's not going to allow you to receive the blessing that you already installed. When we, when Sister Cunningham just read, these people got in the wilderness, which was supposed to be a forty-day journey into the land of Canaan, the land of promise, the land of rest for the children of Israel. And because they disobeyed God, they disbelieved God. Amen. Uh, and they caused the people to murmur. Amen. And, and want to go back. Amen. Then last but not least, uh, Sister Cunningham, can you read for me uh, Exodus chapter 17 and verse number seven? Uh, when you resist God's will, amen, because you have a hard heart, you start to resist the will of God. Exodus chapter 17, verse one through seven. Exodus chapter 17, verses one through. These are the children of Israel. And all the congregation of the children of Israel journeyed from the wilderness of sin after their journeys, according to the commandments of the Lord. And they camped and repped them, and there was no water for the people to drink. Wherefore the people did strive with Moses and said, Give us water that we may drink. And Moses said unto them, Why strive ye with me? Wherefore do ye put the Lord to the test? And the people thirst there for water, and the people murmured against Moses and said, why hast thou brought us up out of Egypt to kill us and our children and our cattle with thirst? And Moses cried unto the Lord, saying, What shall I do <clears throat> until these people? They are almost ready to stone me. And the Lord said unto Moses, Go on before the people and take with thee of the elders of Israel and thy rod wherewith thou smoted the river. Take in thy hand and go. Behold, I will stand before thee there upon the rock in Horeb, and thou shalt smite the rock, and there shall come water out of it, that the people may drink. And Moses did so in the sight of the elders of Israel. And he called the name of the place Massa and Meribeth because of the striving of the children of Israel, because they tested the Lord, saying, Is the Lord among us or not? Uh, does that sound familiar? <laughs> okay. Yeah. When you mess yep. around and be, yeah, come on. You said it all. And this caused the people not to enter to their rest. They already seen what the Lord had done for them. How he, how you going to walk through, thank God for the scripture, the sermon on Sunday, uh, shout it out. But the preacher said, what in, the scripture said in Exodus, he opened up the Red Sea. Walked through on dry land and the Pharaoh's army drowned. Across there, you're hungry. He's feeding you with manna. He shielded you from the enemy. Amen. A pull of cloud. Amen. Pull of sun. Amen. Your shoes did not wear out. Amen. And now you're still complaining. 
you and then you want to stone the leader amen and you know we're still doing that today we're still stoning the leader i'm not just talking about me but anybody that's trying to lead you in a godly way you got to be careful because you know they used to sing a song god gonna get you for that <laughs> you know and so we got to be careful in our criticism critical criticism now what moses i love moses why are you striving with me only thing i've been doing is trying to lead you amen but ultimately we have to recognize that we're doing it against the lord amen and god is trying to bless us and i said before a lot of times in our disobedience it just delays our blessings it doesn't deny the blessing because ultimately god's sovereign will is going to be done amen but even in our lesson they give us a king you know it de it delays our blessing when we want our permissive will versus god's sovereign will amen but it does but if we don't uh uh change our ways if we don't repent and if we remain hard-hearted look what he said 20 years of age and and older it took them 40 years for them to die out they'll never see the land of promise they'll never see the land of rest they never saw it but it was their children amen amen so the psalmist as we conclude uh want us to continue to worship god come before us you know just look up look around look at god amen and see what the lord have done count your many blessings uh we worship god we praise god amen amen and and we just thank god amen for all that he has done this is a praise song amen we ought to get excited amen amen because we know that we have rest when we have concluded our work here when we concluded our journey we have rest beyond the river we have rest when we accept jesus christ as our lord and savior he did the work amen amen he, he died he was the one that was wounded for our transgressions and bruised for our iniquity and with his stripes we're healed amen that's why he tells us come unto me all of we you know, weak and heavy laid i'll give you rest amen thank you thank you for the praise psalm tonight uh, God bless you. Any questions, or comments, or concerns? Uh, uh, there's ten reasons why we are to worship God, and it says here uh, in our nine Psalm 95 because Jehovah, He's a great God, He's a great King. He holds all the deep places of the earth in His hands. The strength of His is of the hills is in His hand. The sea is His. He made the sea. His hands form the dry land. He is our Maker. He is our God. We are his people and we are the sheep of his pastors. Ten reasons in this Psalm 95 why we ought to praise God. Amen. And you know, uh, when we, and he said they shall not enter his rest. Well, I did some studying and there are 17, 17 things God has sworn about. And you know, when God, he said he swore he, it shall not happen. You better believe it is not going to come to pass. Amen. It shall not happen. And that was one thing that he swore about, that they shall not enter uh, uh, into his rest. 17 things God has sworn about. Uh, amen. And I'll give you that another time. God bless you. Is there any, have any question or comments about our lesson? Uh, how do you enter the presence of the Lord? Amen. How do you enter the presence? That's the question for tonight. Feel free to answer the question. How do you enter the presence of the Lord? Whether it be uh, singular, meaning, meaning that it's a personal time, you your personal time with the Lord, or congregational. How do you enter the, your presence of the Lord? Yeah, what's in your spirit when you enter? Is there one tonight you want to answer? How do you come before the Lord? That's the question. Is anyone who wants to reveal yourself? Good evening, Pastor. Bless you, Sister Pencia. Thank you. I would like to think that I enter into his house with praise, with humility, yes. with humbleness, and with an open heart. Yes, thank you. All right. I I concur with that. I'm I, whether it's private worship or public worship. For me, is I'm humble, humble, humility, and then I I do it with ex yeah ex expectation. You know, thank you, Lord. Is there another? How do you enter God's presence? Amen. 
Is there another before we turn it over to Minister Graham for a closing prayer? Good evening. Do share. Sometimes I, I come to the Lord um, humble with gladness and sometimes broken. Yes, yes. Be, be, be real. Thank you. Hallelujah. I received that. Yes. I received that, sis. Let me tell you something about going before God's presence. Sometimes you think you're going to pray. Can I get a witness? And the tears just flow. The tears just flow. Yeah, the tears. I often say, tears say what words can never say. Whatever you're experiencing, whatever you're going through, sometimes you, you cry before the Lord. Because he, the Holy Spirit interprets the, the, the groanings and the yearnings of your spirit anyway. Hallelujah. So sometimes you say, I'm going to go to pray. And I'll tell you, to hit. The, oh, Lord, you know what I'm talking about. It just hits you. <laughs> and you just have to stay there and lay there, prostrate yourself. And them tears begin to flow. Amen. God bless you. I'm going to stop right there. Minister Graham, would you close us out with a word of prayer? Thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. Father God, it's in the name of Jesus. Oh, Lord, our rock of our salvation. The rock, oh God, you are our rock. Thank you, Jesus. Unhearten our hearts tonight, God. Oh, God, let us be open and humble and obedient to you tonight, God. We thank you, oh God, for your word tonight in Psalm 95, God, we thank you, Jesus, for reminding us, oh God, that we have to come to you with praise, oh God. Praise unto the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, reminding us that we have to bow down, oh God, and worship you, God. Thank you for teaching us that we have to bow. Thank you, God, that we have to hear and be obedient to you god the message is clear tonight god we thank you for your humble servant reverend hawkins tonight our pastor god for helping him break down 95 psalms to us oh god clear and concise oh god uh, so that our lives would be better oh god and so that we will not fall short of what your expectations of us is god oh god continue to bless him and and keep him, God, giving him the vision, oh God. Oh God, giving him the strength, oh God. Uh, giving him, oh God, the endurance, oh God, to last, oh God, on this battlefield, oh God. We know it's not easy path, oh God, but with you all things are possible. God, heal the land tonight, oh God. Uh, those that are sick and infirm tonight, God. Uh, oh God, continue to go with uh, uh, Sister Brian's brother on his bed of affliction, God. Only you are the healer tonight. Oh, God, when the doctors give up, you are the healing God. Oh, God, that can comfort and heal your people tonight. Those in the hospital, those in the nursing home, those that are grieving tonight, the loss of senseless deaths, oh, God, in your world today, oh, God, in the schoolhouses, oh, God. We're not safe anywhere, God. Going to the grocery stores, oh God. The, the, war, the war on us, oh God, tonight uh, is real, oh God. And only you, God, uh, can change the atmosphere. Only you, God, uh, can make it right, oh God. Oh God, we know that somebody tonight has not been obedient. Oh God, and you are angry, oh God. But we ask for you, oh God, to, to have mercy upon your world and your people tonight, God. Have mercy upon us, oh God, for we look to you which cometh our help, because all our help cometh from you. Bless greater central, oh God, we pray. Oh God, each and every person, oh God, each and every family, oh God, each and every disciple, oh God, every deacon, oh God, every clergy, oh God, every mother, every child, oh God, every ministry tonight, oh God. Oh God, bring them under submission to you, God. Let their hearts be humble to you, God. Let them receive you in the name of Jesus. 
We pray these things, oh God, until we meet again, oh God, to receive another lesson, oh God, from you, oh God, that we can take, oh God, and use, oh God, uh, on our journey to eternity, God. Uh, we thank you, Lord, and we praise your name. And all these blessings, my Father, we ask in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and it's in the name of the Holy Ghost that we pray. And let every believer on the line tonight say amen. Amen and amen. Glory to God tonight. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, tonight. Thank you, Jesus. God bless you tonight. Amen. Amen. I'd rather bow now. Amen. How about you tonight? I'd rather bow now in the sanctuary, in my home. Amen. I'd rather bow now. I didn't have to be forced to bow later because I read somewhere that said, every knee shall bow mm. and every tongue shall confess that he is Lord. Amen. I bow now because I recognize him, know him to be our Lord. Amen. Let the words of my mouth and meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Amen. God bless you tonight. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, God. God Amen. bless you. Uh, bless, bless you. Okay. Bless, bless you tonight. You. Wonderful message. Hallelujah. Thank you. Amen. God Amen. bless you. Amen. Have a good night. God tonight. Hallelujah. A beautiful lesson. Have yes. A beautiful night. Mercy. Thank you, Lord. Oh, we will sing songs of praise. Hallelujah, God. Amen. 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 <laughs> Every knee shall bow. Every, Every knee. <laughs> God bless confess. you, Pastor. He Amen. is Lord. Amen. God, God bless, bless the word tonight. Yes, Lord. Amen. Lord. Minister Graham, God bless you. God bless God. you, Jesus. God got his eyes on you. Yeah. Don't worry about them hard. Don't worry about them hard. Hallelujah. Put them in God's hand. Only yeah. what Amen. Jesus Christ will last. God, Bless y'all tonight. Lord, keep me from having yes. a hard heart. Amen. Yes. Keep me day by day, Lord. Jesus. Yeah. Bless you. Hallelujah. Bless the word tonight, Pastor. Bless it, bless it. Receive this in the name of Jesus tonight. Thank you. Yeah.